Hello everyone. Thanks for coming. I know this particularly this time is kind of busy time. It's around the lunch time. I'm I'm sure some of you flying out tonight or what. And I'm sure many of you had great fun last night. I did. Right, Ed? <laughs> Adrian. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, thank you for coming. And and before I start, I want to make sure um, show my um, appreciations to to Sorona Dental. Um, they gave me a chance and chance to learn, taught me, they trained me, they fed me, and it really, truly helped in my business. But I'm here to share my true story. And hopefully what I went through with the Sorona, with my story and my business facts, could hopefully help you out. And on top of it, if I could do a little bit of um, helpful tips on this full mouth implant screw retain cases, that's even better, right? Right? Yes. All right, that's awesome. <clears throat> I want it to be really interactive, so in the middle of it, feel free to um, ask me a question. Um, I think for the next one hour, uh, we're going to have a great fun. Okay? Let's make some noise. Yes. I almost said sounds. <laughs> All right, so my name is Sean Han. Thank you, Sorona, once again for, for having me here to share my story with you. Thanks for coming once again. Um, so today we we like to talk about full mouth digital workflow. Um, Mikey, my my brother right there, he described very well about about my subject today, my lecture, one hour lecture today. I'm gonna try to get it done in about 40, 45 minutes so that we we get to actually have more one on one time. Okay, so so they will be they will be all planned out, and also I like to talk about um, <coughs> what happened to my business. And I like to show you some of my cases. I like to tell you about me and a bit of my family, and so that we all understand my true story, right? And how he, it in, really integrated in my business. So, and I'm here to um, reveal the secrets. Okay? okay? Awesome. Thank you. So, so I am Sean Han. I am from uh, Image Dana Group. Um, we're located in. Santa Clara, California. Does anybody know Santa Clara, California? You know where that is? Okay, most of you don't, okay. Us too, in Santa Clara, California, anything over Rocky Mountain, to us, is the East Coast, <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, uh, we, we just held um, a couple blocks away from my, my dental lab, was at um, Super Bowl 50, and we're at that town. You notice it during that time people were on the short sleeves, right? Yes. Yeah, so this weather gets to me and I get a little runny nose. So here's my story. Sometimes my, it sounds okay. That's my laboratory photos. I'm gonna do a little rhyming action. That's my baby daughter. And my reality, that was my reality, right? I had to work and work. I had up to 15 staff laboratory during that time, which was five years ago. Um, I basically had to, my job in my laboratory was fixing work, you know? And, and my wife and I, my better half over there, back in there, Helen, can you stand up, say hi, wave? Thank you. So, I met Serona. Um, it was, for me, truly, it was, um, it was a very great moment for me. And I started to go towards, like, coming outside of my box. What I mean by that, I was so stuck in a, in a box, in a laboratory, trying to fix stuff. But I started to hear, like you guys, I started to hear outside from the box and really started to impacted on my business. And that's my side gig. I do a lot of same day small makeovers. I average about once a week, Helen. I only work with like six docs and they try to keep my books and I'm trying to like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But that's nice um, side gigs for the family. Because anything same day smile design that I do, single business same day smile, it comes to my pocket. Not laboratory account, right? And usually doctors 
100%. They have to have Sarek. They have to have all the blocks is ready. And all the pictures, all the study models should be ready. And I come in when preps are almost ready. Bring my play, glaze and lipping action, right? With the, my mouse, wireless mouse. <laughs> so, I started to have a little bit more leisure on my time. So I truly started to take more courses. And I noticed in my photos, my works were getting better. And I'm sure some of you will witness it. Some of you have seen my works before. Because been to my, my, my lectures, right? Right, Ed? Okay. So that's my office right there. Nice, huh? Joke. <laughs> no, it was an event. It's not that nice. That's my office. Am I... Am I a fish man? I try. <laughs> So it's been really popular item. It's been really popular. Um, and it's for the patient, especially full mouth screw retain implant. For the patient, it's a life changing experience for them. It's a very urgency matter for them. Because for those who are going for a full mouth screw retain concept, they basically can't fight, uh, bite anything in that situation. You know what I mean? And once we do it right for them, we instantly change their lifestyle. And I, I've, I've experienced and I've, I've dealt, dealt with a lot of patients afterwards. And I see them like, the side effect of getting them all of um, full, small, full mouth screw retain. One of the side symptoms is they start gaining weight. Because they start eating, right? What a joy, I mean, what a, what a sadness without having the joyness of eating food, enjoying food, the chewing. So I think us as a dental technician should be really proud to be a dental technician. I think I was pretty loud, huh? Was that rhyming all fine? Yeah? Make some noise? All right, let's go for it. <clears throat> all right, full mouth digital workflow. Um, so we're, I'm gonna, I'd like to present to you all my, all my technology and and, and the techniques that I do is, is really based on what I have so far with the software and, and the tools that I have. And it's just how it is. I'll share flat out, okay? All right, technology. Um, when I saw technology, even five, 10 years ago, I, I would never even think of like even 5% that I would be in a smack middle of technology. I was happy technician learning wax how to do and, and you know, I was, I was one of the king in my neighborhood. I was fast waxer, especially diagnostic wax up. So I used to work with like five different labs. You know, it, that was before I started my business. And I would go around like a freelancer and work till like 2 a.m. do diagnostic wax up. And whenever the diagnostic wax up comes in, people say, the boss, my ex-boss would say, okay, call Sean, he'll come in. You know what I mean? That was my lifestyle. I never really thought I was gonna be in the middle of a technology. And now, I'm ending up with three of these babies. So in my laboratory, I do have three MCX-5. Um, I used to have two MCX-5 and I'm, I'm hearing and I'm still hungry. I wanna grow more. I think I'm young. You know, I have, I have more year to, go, year to go. I have four kids. You guys saw uh, four young kids. I want to put them to a uh, nice education and, and even better and better. So I want, I want to grow my business even more from now, right? Does anybody want to stay where it is now? No. Nobody, right? That's why we're in the business. So <clears throat> I got one more because I see a big opportunity coming, which would be a surgical stent. And we're gonna share on the one-on-one -on -one time a little bit. And I also have two more babies, which I call one of them Helen, and I call the other one for Eileen. Helen is my wife's name, and Eileen is my partner's name. So the first one, that that one over here, to the to the two year left is Tiger. The next one is Wood. And the third one we have not named him yet. 
It is very important because once you have multiple meals, unless you have a names on their, their identification, you never know. And you start like walking back and forth. Like, oh, no, not this one, this one, <laughs> right? Okay, let's go to the, the subject. So technology, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, like I said, I was so naturally technician and loving what I do. I don't like uh, complications, so I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Therefore, Serona system, the complete package really made sense to me. In-lab in -lab users, can you please raise your hands? Anybody? Here, please. It's, sorry, it's hard to see some area. Okay, so it's, a, it's about 50% of us, right? So that's what happened to me. Okay, and I'm sure many of you, same similar situation, right? Eddie? Adrian? Okay. So <clears throat> it's got the complete package. So for guys like me who like simplicity, don't like complication, it was perfect solution for me. And then software 15 came. It was last year. I think um, one of the guy, you know, called me as a, you know, I'm one of the better tester, but I got to start work with software 15 and I really started to see like, okay, I see my new vision now. You know, um, for fact, <clears throat> on all of our concept, this was a fact here. So about year 2014, I mean, me as, even as a manual, manually driven lab, I was locally in my neighborhood. People call it SF, San Francisco Bay Area, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big land, right? <clears throat> And in San Francisco Bay Area, my lab, Image Talent Group, is known as Implant Specialty Lab, okay? So we were already doing implant cases where about 50% of our implant-related work, okay? That was the year 2014, right, Helen? Am I right? Oh, she's out there somewhere. Anyways. And I did the, the winter time, the, the fourth quarter of 2014, it was raising up at around 60%, okay? And last year at LMT Chicago, I was at about 60, 65%. It was keep raising up, okay? But um, is there anybody who were with me last year at LMT lecture? So you remember. Okay, Eddie, now we have a witness, so I can't lie. I said, I always talk about my vision, my goal. I said I wanted to do I, I did one of my few uh, all on four type technique, right? And I said I wanted to do at least once a week. Or at least once a week. I mean, that's like dream come true. And I was looking at about maybe two years. Okay, this year now, being totally honest, I'm averaging about two to three arches a week. The, so full mouth, screw retain. And I'll share with you how. Um, <clears throat> I was never, full arch screw retains were more region of the removable side with the, with the titanium bar and do denture setting on top, right? Everybody agree? So for me, it was like, oh, that's a big scale case. I always want to get into it, right? I'm sure many of us are that way. But I just did not have solutions yet. And when, be, because um, I mentioned to you about Software 15, when Software 15 with the functionality of library multi-unit abutment function, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm in. And now it became two, three arches a week. Maybe I could grow up to like one a week because it's keep on growing. And each case is I'm, I'm, I'm succeeding and I'm keep getting calls from, from different surgeons, different groups, you know what I mean? That's how we grow it, okay? And I'm gonna share how I do it. Pretty fair so far? Am I talking too fast? No. Too slow? Okay. Uh, I'll share with you just one more joke. Those of you who were here yesterday, you're gonna get it. My wife calls me always FOB, F-O-B. You know, anybody know F-O-B means? Okay, <laughs> please. <laughs> F-O-B means fresh off the boat. I came to state when I was 17 years old. And she came to state when she was nine year old. So she calls me Fab. She has a right to call me Fab. So my partner is a very nice guy, Craig. One day he's like, 
And I never say, I never accept it. I, hey, I could even lecture in front of people, American people. I'm not fab anymore. You know, and she still calls me fab, it's a joke. And my partner is like, Sean, it's okay, you're not fab, you're wob. W-O-B, way off the boat. <laughs> I'm way off the boat, all right? <laughs> all right so I'm, I'm saying this because I'm kind of warning you, middle of my lecture, a lot of broken English will come out, please understand. But uh, my goal is to deliver my message to you as most efficient way, okay? All right. How? Well, here's some real cases. I want you to see uh, and meet one of my patients. I just want you to see, like I mentioned to you, how much of a life-changing experience for them. Well, and I feel a lot more confident and I feel uh, good. I mean, I feel like I look it's a lot a beautiful better lady. and I'm a lot more presentable. Um, I just have a lot more confidence. And I used I I have a pre up pre up uh, video, and she wouldn't um, open her mouth that way, and her know, facial expression like to, uh, totally changed. I feel like I can smile. I, I feel like I can yawn. I don't. Um, I feel like I can eat, um, and I just have you know confidence that I look like normally and maybe even nice. Before, I was frequently not even using my denture because it would just it would it wouldn't stay right and it was um, my lower denture was just flopping around and stuff. So I, a lot of times I just didn't even use it. Can and, you imagine your uh, lower denture just flopping now around? Now it's uh, really solid and it's in there and every, it feels almost like my regular teeth. You know, it's just uh, it doesn't move at all and it's just. Uh, it's great. I don't have to worry. I can brush it and I don't have to worry about taking it in and out. So that's about the story, okay? <clears throat> so it was her. You see the picture? You see it well? New person. And it's it's very joyful experience, the process. It's not an easy process, but it's simple enough that I could have handled it, right? And I'm gonna share you with technology now, the step-by-step. -step. <clears throat> so the ideal workflow, we go through CBCT scan. So we be able to plan it out, right? Even before plan it out, I be able to receive now um, surgical stent and I be able to either mill it out or, or or um, have SciCat uh, it, um, print it out for me, or I mill it out off of MCX5, which is another option. And off of the surgical stand, I do create implant level model, okay? U utilizing same surgical mount of a drill, right? And I place my implant analog, and onto the model, I drill a hole, and I place my own implants first, prior to the surgery, so that I have a nice ballpark. And now, even without um, denture experience that I have, right, I could create immediate denture according to that mount. And I already have a vertical dimension from pre-op, right? And then we go into the implant surgery. Doctor placed the implant. And they say about minimal 35 Newton centimeter, they need to be able to torque it. As long as they're, they're over that strength, we'll be able to load immediately. That's what we call immediate load, right? So I place my immediate denture that I have milled off of PMMA, and I, I hollow a hole a little bit. We place multiple unit abutment, and then we put titanium cylinders on each spot and I, I place my PMMA bridge, which is the immediate denture, and I reline them. And my favorite tool of relining is called EZ. It's, it's literally called EZ Snap-on or something. Yeah, it's from uh, Stungo. Very easy. 
That's why they call it EEZ. It cures right away. And then when patient heals a little bit, we go through the verification jig trying, which is a very important tool. And I'm going to share about that step, step by step in about 10, 15 minutes, OK? So hang on tight. Yes? Uh, you OK with questions? Yes, as long as they're not tough questions. Uh, when, when you say you mount temporary cylinders to it, mm -hmm. I like to do it on the surgery, in patient mouth. It's not going to work on the model? Well, the model, it, it could work, but I, I like to give leisure for the surgeon. Does, do, you, do you see what I mean? If surgeon does exactly as a surgical stent, they're, they're like 95% exact, right? But I, I don't like the air, right? So air relining and everything. So I, I just prepare with hollowed hole. OK, did I answer your question? Thank you. And I used to do, to answer your question more, I used to rubber them and do the you know, whole nine yards. But now, with easy pickup, it's really easy. So I do the top portion first. It sets up in 60 seconds, less than 60 seconds. Take it out, reline from the bottom. And they last for a good three months. So during the three months where we're doing that whole process, right? All right. So that's how people usually do a CB scan. And I show you a little bit of a surgical stand guide. So we have an option of when it's edentulous case, edentulous, edentulous case meaning people have no teeth at all, then we have no option but have to duplicate the denture into radio opaque material and send it off to SciCat in Germany after we plan it out, after we do the scan, OK? When, it, when there's a couple of teeth in there, then that means yes, we could do it. So doctor, do scan Omnicam, the teeth, and export it. I'll just, I'll just share with you so that you know, OK, FYI. And they, they export it to their Galileo file and kind of stitch it together, just like a buckle bite and a opposing scan, right? Stitching it together. And then they do the planning, and they send it back to, um, from that stage, they could, they could send it to me. You know what I mean? For, uh, through the Serona Connect. And I'd be able to mail it off with the surgical stand material, FDA approved. So I'd like to show you. So there's in software. We have to understand software. In order for us to understand software, we have to conquer administration. This is a little bit more for in-lab users, right? So this, this is a little video clip. We have options. We actually did have a, a workshop yesterday here. We, I'm basically choosing all the implant spots on the menu. I'm, I'm communicating with the software. This is Astra or this is, this is Nobel. This is Strawman, you know what I mean? And I'm telling the software this is gonna, going to be multi-unit abutment. And I like it to be how much of a gum height. All the detail is in there. But as long as we choose right option, everything is automation, basically, right? It's just hard enough for us to do it. If it was easy, anybody would have done it, right? Okay. So like I mentioned, there's menus, right? So that's all the administrations. I like to talk about a little bit of scanning. In scanning, who owns an Ineos X5 scanner? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. All right. Who owns Ineos Blue? One, two. Okay. I'm sorry, but with this technology, it only has to be scanned within Ineos X5 because um, I did I did um, pre-scanned it for for a workshop yesterday, which was very successful. Um, Ineos X5 was introduced to us so that they could scan multiple unit implant, implant scan posts. And they need to be scanned one at a time. And they rotate in all kinds of angulation. And about that detailed video, I do have, um, uh, Sorona was nice enough to still post. My workshop's still on there, Cassandra. It's on YouTube and on OK, 
I have a one hour uh, free webinar stuff on uh, YouTube, and you can take a look at the um, technique. And it, here's showing a little bit, right? It's showing through like different lights, different angulation. I'm not, I'm not moving all that. It's, it's an automation of a scanner, okay? So after design is done, I mean scanning. Scanning is basically um, taking the photos, panoramic photo in a 3D format, and they're stitching to each other, right? So now we have model, and now because of a nice technology, we'll be able to edit the models. I don't even have to trim off my uh, gingiva. I just, I'm just softening it on the software. And it's an immediate, immediate of a thing. How cool is that, right? And if I want to, I could cut it off, right? There my little bit of my OCD kicks in, you know, I gotta have everything all lined up, you know? All right. And then I'm also communicating with the software where the arch belongs and what kind of horizontal lines, level, vertical, right? And now I finally be able to tell software, can you see, oh, it's kind of weak, huh? Okay. I'll be able to spot on the implant site, communicating with the software. When model setting is done, we go on to designing phase. Designing phase is very simple. I mean, sorry, it's not that simple. It's simple. Am I going through <laughs> craziness? It's simple, but it's simple enough. That's the, that's the right word. You could think of it as you're digitally setting the tooth on spot. To be honest with you, you know, I do cosmetic cases a lot too, right? Compared to doing like 10 unit veneer, no, even 16 unit veneer, let's say I do refractory veneers, right? Versus all on four, I would definitely take all on four and it would take me less of a time and less of a headache. Does it make sense to you? Yes? Maybe not. <laughs> Once you've done it. So I'm digitally grabbing the teeth and digitally setting the teeth in a position. And I have a freedom of setting my own margin line, my own pink porcelain or pink gingiva, right? That's what greatest thing about it. And once I put it, this is called bio jaw, right? It's called bio jaw face. And it basically is, I have a, I have a tooth library option. It's called morphology. And then I have a, position and shaping option, which is like I'm positioning the teeth and I'm scaling the teeth, the size of it, four dimensionally, okay? And then I set it up and I get the proposed that I planned for. That's called bio jaw. Because of bio jaw function, I'm right there. And I have a little bit of video. Yeah, you had a question? Okay, just picking on you. Milling time. It's me working really hard right there. Trying to um, uh, squeeze in the um, pucks, zirconia pucks, or PMMA pucks. That's usually one of my favorite tools. It's five axis mill, and believe it or not, <coughs> the placement of the implant does not have to be all parallel. It's fact. Because that's why we have multi-unit abutment function, okay? Multi-unit abutment, and I'm gonna cover it in the middle, that it's a, it's a conical connection on top of it. So basically, screw retain bridge technique is where on the top of implant fixture, we're placing multi-unit abutment with the conical connections on top. And I'm explaining just in case, so everyone's on the same page. And on top of multi-unit abutment, we're screwing in onto multi-unit abutment. Does it make sense, right? So that's, that's how we be able to fit of different angled implants, okay? All right, that's my messy lab. So implant placement, you know, I'm not gonna go too much further about it. <clears throat> Vertical dimension, I usually 
get it done on a conversion time, and they were, they were made due to pre-op. Pre-op meaning we already practiced all the vertical dimension in the past, and I don't want to go too much detail of it. And I could do on the model, that was like six months ago, just like your question. But nowadays, I do more on the chair's uh, clinical side, which is much more um, predictable. So basically, conversion meaning is we're creating denture and the implant components, we're bonding them together so that they're screw retained, not removable, right? So that's pretty much the steps up to final fabrication. Okay, and, and I'm gonna go through final fabrication. The videos of scanning and designing was for final restoration. Of, and I could, all I have to do is change material type. That's the coolest thing about software, right? Technology, digital workflow. So I have some helpful tips. Those who are going into um, all full mouth screw retain techniques, okay? How are we doing? Am I boring you? Is it interesting enough? Yeah? Awesome. Helpful tips here. So I talked about a lot of softwares, right? So now I, I'd like to share with you some, some good tips so that you bring it home, OK? Verification jig is, I think, to me, equivalent to guided surgery. You know, the important, importance of guided surgery is very high nowadays, right? Same, on the left side, verification jig is very, very important. Because a lot of cases ending up not fitting each other, right? They're, they're screw retained. All five or six implants are connected together through the threads. So if the model is not right, they're never going to fit, right? That's a lot of failures out there has been happening. And I was, I was inherited with... I would say 50% of my cases that comes in were trying to get done with the you know, manual ways, different, different ways. And, and I, I'm nailing him down like 100%. So this is my secret, verification jig process. So after multiple units are done, right? <clears throat> after multiple units are done, multiple units looks like this, right, on the screen. It looks like little cone um, shaved up. Right? It almost looks like external hex implants. Right? And, but they're conical connection. They're, they're cone shape. Right? And on top of it, we're just just same as our implant cases, we, we should be able to uh, place impression coping on top of multiple unit. So there's a difference. And usually, not to confuse you, usually multiple unit abutments on library of multiple unit abutment on top are compatible. They're like a kind of like universal in our laboratory, in, in our library, library. It's the difference of the gum height and the implant type due to a screw thickness of a multiple unit abutments. It's, it's hard enough, right? It's, we, we, we're, we're in the same page, right? OK. So I place impression coping on top of it. And all of them put in utilizing long screw, long screw, okay? And I, and we could do this on the clinic side too, okay? Floss around. This is very old, old school technique. Floss around. They don't have to be super tight. And I like to utilize material like light curable resin material, right? It's called. I like the product from Primal Tech, uh, Primal Splint, or Primal Tech uh, Pattern Resin. Um, they're like a kind of like a jelly feeling, and we'll be able to wrap it around. So I'm basically creating a bridge, a one-piece bridge. You see, some of you are already seeing where I'm going, right? And I cure them. People, a lot of people make mistake. I've done my verification jig try, and how come it's not fitting? Hundred percent because you didn't cut and reweld. All the material out there, they have a shrinkage. By one or even five micron, they're not gonna fit. So we have to intraorally, you gotta do this step. Intraorally, we gotta cut on usually each sections, and we gotta re weld because of the shrink shrinkage. It's gonna still fit. 
because even, even the resin material, they have a little bit of flex. But we always have to cut with a thin diamond, and we have to re reconnect them with light curable stuff. And you're going to see instantly how it's just going to, screw's just going to fit without any pressure. Then now, I am ready for final impression. The difference, see? So open tray, we all know, right? And final impression, but I have a one point. Can everyone read it for me? Please, one, two, three. Remove screws first. A lot of doctors and a lot of surgeons out there, I'm not talking bad mouth about them, but we create beautiful verification jig trying, and they try to yank out the impression, and usually one or two out of the verification jig screw are still engaged. They think they put it out. I feel like I put it out too. You know, I've done many times internally. Remove them first. Do not guess. Once you destroy it, we got to do the whole new process again from stage eight, okay? All right, sandblast on the left side. I, I recommend you to sandblast the, the bottom of an analog. And even on a verification try jig in impression, I like to connect my, my analogs too, so they're secured. At this point, I think we're at 99.9% .9 that it's gonna fit, right? It's logically making sense. So some final cases I'd like to share with you before I end, going to Q&A. Some of my early days, which was a year ago. What do you guys think? They all right? Try to do some of my pink work. Sorry about iPhone level photos. <laughs> They're screw retained, see that? That's final picture. So component, I'd like to share with you one more time. Very bottom, that's the multi-unit abutment and multiple unit abutment. Uh, that's the in post for Medantica base, scan post, right? And you could, with one, you could scan whole mouth because we're, we're scanning one at a time. And that's the screwdriver for multiple unit abutment. For multiple unit abutment, they're grabbing whole thread. So, so it, it, is, it does require a different type of screwdriver per system. Okay? But per library, I would say. Okay? You could get it through Medantica or, or a cap for NT trading. There's a two library available for Sonona Inlab Software 15. Either cap for NT trading or Medantica with Medantica. Okay? And those are the um, titanium cylinder on top of multiple unit abutment. So we're bonding our zirconium restoration onto this piece, utilizing that short, short screw to deliver, okay? This is, this is the picture of Medantica. And if you want to see the actual stuff, you could go to the booth, and I, per booth, I left one arches of my work of screw retain, so you get to really closely see, okay? And you're more than welcome to come visit me and after the course. That's the close-up looks. And that's the anti-trading scan post. Let me show you some of my work. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Yeah. PMMA, right? Screw retain. So now I have leisure. My frames are getting done so easily. Like I'm digitally placing my teeth. And I'll be able to apply different kind of composites, right? That's PMMA. Screw retain. That's how they look like when they're milled. I mean, it's already done, pretty much, right? And I, I would like probably mill it back. I make sure that long screw is going through for final conversion, right? I mentioned to you. And this is one of my favorite technique. I like to utilize um, GC Gradia, number 23. And you notice how I cut back a little bit, right? It's like a canvas, right? And I, I roll it up like that and I put it up like that, and I, I squeeze through. 
and I cure it, utilizing either light cure or triage. Triage, dance play triage uh, cure takes about five minutes. They, it, it cures like hit cure. And then I, I like to apply a little bit of um, OptiGlaze light curable. OptiGlaze from GC. That's another close up look. <clears throat> and I want to show you some of my zirconium work. Yeah? So I've noticed, I started to getting into more, it's starting to allow me more into my, going back to my artistry, right? Because I understand now my software and my mill is getting my frame done up to like 85%. And I have to put my fingerprint of that extra 15%, right? That's, that's how I am different from Mr. Gl uh, Gladwell Laboratory, right? So I found this photo. I actually used this photo. I thought was pretty good. It was a year ago. And getting to different levels, right? That's a full zirconia with pink composite. And that's lower, that's full zirconia with pink porcelain. And upper is full zirconia screw retained. That's a real case. It was done very successfully. And I'm only skin layering um, number five to number 12, only on the facial, 0.5 millimeter. I'm not cutting back up to the lingual, but only up to incised latch. So my occlusions are still protected by full zirconia. I love this technology and materials. So that's how they look like. I, you see how much I had to shift the midline, right? And after same time, we, I usually place um, pink stains for uh, water staining and then let it center, right? And that's how I cut back, like, you see the difference, right? Very little bit, like 0.5, maybe 0.7. It's not because I'm lazy, I'm trying to protect my occlusion with zirconia, like a metal lingual in the back in the days. And let it stand. And screw axis holes already opened up for me. They're lined up. Um, there's very, very, I would say, none to maybe two, three minutes of checking the fitting between the zirconium restoration and a titanium cylinder. As long as in the administration, I did right choices. It's logical fact, okay? So what do I do? I get to focus on my 15% of artistry. So I, I glaze first, right? Internal life stains. I just went through some of uh, life staining um, work. And I like to apply some power porcelain. So that's full contour with pink porcelain. That's usually my case. So when I say two arches per week, I usually do one case per week. That's upper and lower, or two different patients, usually. So lower, usually, I like to keep it full contour zirconia. Not because I'm lazy, but I like to keep it as zirconium occlusion. And porcelain-wise, I'd be able to apply pink porcelain and they're not stressful area. And when it's upper, I do have a little bit more freedom because they're on the facial and they're out from the occlusion, right? So I do 0.5 to 0.8 millimeter of skin layering on the facial. Does it make sense, everyone? How many ceramics here? I'm almost done. Nice, so proud of you guys. As a close up, I'm enjoying my work now, right? I was from in the box, even five years ago. And right now, I guarantee you, next year we meet again this place and I'm presenting about all on four system advanced style. I'm sure my work would be 50% better than it is now. I could imagine that. All right, so that's about it. Um, <clears throat> This is like 30 second video of quick workflow. So you could look it up for us on, um, you could type in DG Smile. And I share a lot of uh, technology, I mean, step by steps.
So that's a, what I talked about. CT scan, right? And surgical scan duplication, eventualist cases. And on patient mouth, we place anchor pin and place implant and do the conversion at the same time. Nice and bloody. <laughs> and on the day of a surgery, usually we change patients. Patients usually feel instant difference. Can you hear me? Okay. So it's a teamwork concept. I want to stress one more fact for all of you out there. Here. Um, this concept can happen very easily when you're in the same page with your doctors per case. If I'm good and my doctor's doing different technique or he's over here, eight or nine out of ten times, your screw retain bridge is not going to fit. I'm sorry to say that. So we have to be on the same page. Okay? So you could reach me out. <coughs> you could um, reach me out at um, type in Shanan CDT on Facebook, and I have like about 20 more spots left. So request me fast. Okay? Just kidding. Any questions so far? My time's almost up. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right about that. And this would be sadly the last, last question because we've got to wrap it up for our next rock star Chad Rogers, right? At 2 o'clock. You're absolutely right. I did mention, and I do, I got to do my homework first on a pre op stage. So we do all that. And I didn't show too much detail, but I also scan of her patient's pre op. So I follow my inside ledge position for now. By this summer, we'll be able to just copy it. That's what I heard. Did I just say that? <laughs> On live TV. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.